Hey up YouTubers, it's uh, Steve Allen here, a aka Catanonia, and today we're going to be doing a video review on a Korean um, rifle. Uh, the manufacturer is Sin Sun, and uh, the two rifles that they actually are well known for are the Korea 707, which we have here, and the uh, Sumatra, which was an update to that with a different magazine loading system. But today, we're going to concentrate on the Korea 707, and in this case, it's the Mark II. Now, you can get these rifles um, as the Mark I, which is the original rifle they brought out, which um, had some problems, let's say, um, and that got addressed with the Mark II, and F1 basically says that the Mark II is the rifle to get if you can get your hands on one. Um, the Mark III, uh, which you can still get, I believe, in certain countries where they don't have power issues, um, apparently there's reports of them using plastic parts and they're down on power and stuff like that. Um, it's difficult to find information because this is not a popular rifle, uh, but do your own research on that. Uh, but by all accounts, the Mark II is the one that you should be getting um, on that. Now, that comes straight into the point of why is this rifle so special and why has it got problems? Well, it's not a problem, it's the fact that this rifle here can kick out up to 80 foot pound in its default. And by default I mean without any fettling or anything messing around with it. And that all comes down to this little dial on the bottom. This dial will basically let you go from all the way down from low power all the way up to a potential 80 foot pounds. Now, when these rifles started coming into the UK, that was not a problem because you could set this up and you could uh, get your uh, gunsmith to set that up and lock it out for you. Uh, and then they brought the anti-tamper rules in. And since um, the uh, Korean company basically refused to do any anti-tampering. And hence, then, they were stopped from importing it into the UK. So the only rifles that are left in the UK are the ones that have actually been set by gunsmiths. And this, on this particular rifle, has been disabled. This actual dial does nothing. Now, because there's no anti-tamper, it is fairly easy, if you know what you're doing, to come in and mess around with these. So, getting hold of one of these is going to be difficult, because you can't buy them. And you can't buy the Korea uh, Mark III either in the UK. You can buy it in America still, I think if you look in Pyramid Air, they've got it listed in there. So if you get one of these, it's a hard, hard job to find one. The only place you're going to get them is second hand, and of course if uh, there's one hidden away in the back of a gun shop that's been unsold. So, the Mark II is this one here on there. So, what makes this rifle so distinctive? Well, quite simply, if we take a look, we've got two air cylinders, one on top of each other, and the barrel on the top. Um, and, and that's where it gets its 80 foot pound potential out of it there. Uh, its fill capacity in here is 380cc, 200 bar. The other unique feature about this rifle is the Winchester style cocking. So let's just show you how that works. So if we just bring this up and oh, I'm trying to do this in front of camera in shot. So let's just put it up. There we go, like so. And fire, and as you can see, there is quite a loud report on that rifle. And the other unique feature about this rifle, which made it uh, a bit difficult, let's say, is its magazine system. As we see here, it's not a circular magazine system. It's what's called an inline magazine system. So, take the magazine off and take a look. We see that the rifles actually load in horizontally and are basically pushed into the mechanism via a spring every time you cock the rifle. Um, and that does present a few problems, and we'll talk about that a little bit further. So, the rifle itself, and again, I'll, as usual, I'll leave something down at the top. I don't know which side it's going to be on, but I'll leave it with the details and the specs of the rifle. But these rifles, you can get them in many, many different formats on here. You can get them in many, many different uh, calibers, I think, all the way from uh, 177.2, uh, 0 0.22, 0 0.25, I think, are the calibers you can get them in on there. Um, you can also get this rifle in two formats. You can get it in the rifle format, or you can get it in the... Uh, in the carbine format, which obviously has shorter tubes and barrels on it. Uh, this is the rifle. Um, it is heavy, unscoped. This one is 7.4 kilograms, and that weight is really, see where my hand and my ring is? It's distributed there, and you can certainly feel it. So it's nicely balanced out um, on there. But uh, its length in this one, we're looking at uh, just under 43 inches, I think it is, for the rifle and the carbine. That comes down to 
uh, 34.5-ish inches in there. And I believe they even do a MIDI, which is something in the middle, but I haven't been able to find any details on that. So, as you can see, uh, yeah, quite a substantial rifle, um, powerful, very powerful, and by all accounts, accurate as well. So let's have a quick look at the rifle, um, really quickly. We've got standard little butt plate on the back here. I'm sure you could replace that if you wanted to. A nice, nice wooden stock, um, totally ambidextrous. So left and righties are, are easily catered for. Some nice stippling going on here. Of course, we've got the Winchester style um, loading mechanism. <clears throat> we have a safety catch uh, here, which is nice and easy to be operated. Um, it's resettable and it's not automatic. We can take a look in the rifle here. We've got some beautiful stamping going on there. It's supposed to be engraved, but obviously it's not as stamped. Um, and it's basically pictures of anim uh, dogs chasing animals, hunting scenes. So it's quite nice. It's, it's really, really nice. And we have a um, nice four stop going up here. Um, we have a swivel mount. We don't have a swivel on the back. But you'll find a lot of people will be using uh, bipods with this because it is effectively a sniping. Yeah, the way I've described it, this is a sniping rifle um, for long distance with its with its uh, 80 foot pound power delivery. You can see how well this will perform. Up the top here, we have uh, a nice uh, dovetail, 11 mm dovetail, plenty and plenty and plenty of length to fit any scopes on there. No obtrusions or magazine stuff up here to get in the way. Now. Quite unique with this rifle uh, as well. There's not many uh, PCPs out there that have sights. So we've got um, fixed sights here, iron sights, and up the front as well. Um, and you do not need to remove them to put your scope on. Uh, you just got to watch out for your clearances. So that's a nice feature for those that want to do that. But I think with this rifle, you'll probably be putting a scope on it. Okay, well, here we have the, uh, this is where you can single load pellets into here. Um, so you can put one pellet in at a time, cock it, push it in, drop it in. It's all gravity fed, so you have to drop it in. can be a bit fiddly. Of course, on the other side, we've got the magazine system. So, as we said, this magazine system is quite unique. So that's here, um, and obviously it's all activated through the Winchester-style cocking mechanism underneath. The trigger itself is a very, very nice two-stage trigger, and it is adjustable. Um, and I've managed to find some links uh, to a breakdown of this rifle, sort of like um, instruction magazine or something like that, instruction booklet. So I'll put the links down there as well for that. Then of course we've got the barrel itself across the top on here. Now I believe these barrels are Walter um, Lofer uh, barrels on here. Certainly from 1997 onwards they were using those barrels across there. Um, up the top here, if we look in there, we've got our fill port. And our fill port is just a standard type adapter which slots into there. Like I said, it's a 200 bar fill, and underneath we have a fill gauge as well. And a nice thing that they've added in is that we do actually on the top here, we do have a nice standard adapter so that you can fit a, a silencer or modifier or baffles on, on, the, on the front here to help reduce that bark because it is a loud rifle. So that's just a really, really quick walkthrough of the actual rifle itself. Um, um, it's, like I said, it is heavy. Um, I shot this and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, the uh, shooting sequence like we always do with the music. So I know some of you like it, some of you hate it. But um, this, is, this is an accurate rifle. Um, it's certainly got a lot of power. Now obviously I'm only firing it at 12 foot pound. But you can imagine why the Americans um, and other non-restricted countries like this rifle. Stick a bipod on this rifle, get yourself down in a sniping position, and fire away, and you can be hitting bunny rabbits at god knows what distance, and this thing is accurate. You're firing out, you just imagine you're firing out 0.25 uh, pellet, 60, 70 yards with this thing, with a full whack, that rabbit's gonna go down in it. So anyway, Enough about that. What we're going to do is we're going to cut into the uh, the shooting part of the video to show you how the accuracy and then with it, and then we'll come back and we'll have some reviews on it. Okay, so we've got the Shinsung Korea 707 here. We're outside. Like I said, we've got a lovely, lovely day. Nice and still. A little bit of road noise. We always get that on a still day. Um, we're going to put uh, nine shots because uh, I find that's the best way with this magazine. It's supposed to be a ten-shot magazine, but. Um, 
can't quite get it to load and maybe I just need some more practice on there. But we're going to stick nine shots down, 25 metres. We're going to try two sets of pellets. We're going to try the RWFs, Super Domes, and we're going to give the uh, Diablos a go as well, the field sports. Um, we've got some rests out as well because this is a heavy rifle. Um, as much as it is fun just to uh, cock this rifle and just shoot it offhand. I'm not that good, um, my arms aren't that strong on here because as we know it is a heavy rifle. Um, we've got this set to its max fill pressure of 200 bar and uh, what we do is we'll give it a go and see how we get on. Okay, so that was the RWSs uh, on the left hand target. What we'll do now is we'll go on to the Diablo Field Sports. That's pretty good. Let's go and see how we got on. Okay, so we're back. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, it sort of seems to be a regular part of, of the uh, of my videos, and some of you like to use it, some of you hate it, but that's just the way I do it. So how did we get on anyway? So um, what we got here is the RWSs, um, and I'm not been playing with this rifle too much. You know, I've put about f uh, 200 pellets through it, um, but that's not too bad actually. That's not too bad. Um, and that's RWSs, and I think that's the best I've ever had RWSs shoot actually. So I might actually have found a use for my tin of pellets RWSs. And as usual, I moved on to the Diablos, and certainly getting much much better with the Diablos. So is it accurate? Yeah, it's it's not as accurate as the modern day rounds we had. Certainly not as accurate as my Cricket or the BSA Ultra that I was playing with recently. But um, yeah, it's certainly accurate, um, and you can imagine if this thing is kicking out decent amounts of power um, over 50, 60, 70 yards, yeah, it's pretty damn good on there. So, what about the rifle? What do we think about it? Well, like I said, it's a heavy rifle, but it's well balanced, and unlike other heavy rifles, i.e. the hats that I reviewed not so long ago and got so much stick for, this thing actually shoots really nice. If you can get the rifle stable, um, rested, or on a bipod, and you set yourself up and you line up, it just beautifully, the trigger on it is nice, the release, the pellet, every, everything about it just seems nice, and it just goes where you shoot it. So I really, really do like that. But there are some issues, as always, there are issues with this rifle. Um, and the biggest problem is obviously the magazine system on it. Now. It's not that much of an issue once you get used to it and once you're set up. But this whole magazine system, what we're going to do is just take this out and show you how it all works. So let's just drop that down. Oh, I've got some pellets. So what I'm going to do is how do you load this? Right, so the first thing is you've got to get your pellet and you've got to put your pellet in, in the top. So you pull the spring down and you drop the pellet in flat end first. Because obviously you want a pointy end going into the barrel, like so. And I don't know if we can just see that pellet in there. I'll put some more in and we can see how that goes. So we drop another pellet in there. You can see them now dropping in. And the reason it's been designed like this is so that you can accommodate any length of pellet. So you may have really short stubby pellets or really long pellets. And it was accommodated like this deliberately so that you put anything in there. In fact, you could even put round spherical like uh, ball bearings in here, which I, I believe is illegal now. But that was the whole point of it, to do that. So the first issue you've got is how do you store a magazine? Now you can put that magazine down and lock it, and it's just like a little catch there. 
that you can lock it. You can see those pellets in like so. But oh, let's get this pellet in there. Oh, I've got a deformed pellet in the tin. That's not good. And we'll drop another one in there like so. Right, so how do you store this pellet, uh, this magazine? Well, this is one slight problem. Watch this. Ready? Woo! <laughs> All the pellets can fly now. So that is a bit of a problem. Now, some people have built sleeves over these to make, make it easy so you can store extra magazines. But that's your first problem. But you get used to that. The biggest problem, though, is that pellets can be different lengths because of this, the way it's designed to accommodate it. Now, if you're using a standard size length pellet, um, you might not have so many problems. But when you first get the rifle, in here, up the top, in this, underneath the scope, uh, in here, there's a thing called a pellet trap. And that has to be set a precise distance so that it can feed those pellets and it depends on the length of the pellet. So when you first get this rifle, you have to set it up to your pellet length. And to do that, you've got to take all your scope off, you've got to take all the screws, there's about three or four screws in here, and there's bits of springs, and you've got to get that pellet, and you've got to adjust that pellet trap, so that it can then trap the length of the pellet to feed it into the mechanism. So that is an absolute pain in the backside. Scope off, top of the mechanism off here to do all that. Now, the plus side is that once you've done that for a standard type pellet, and you know that these are the pellets you're going to use, then you don't need to do it again. But if you're changing pellets and you're making use of that inline system and you want to use shorter or longer pellets, you've got to do that every single time. And that's a bit of a problem, a real problem. The other problem with this is that you can only use flat pellets or rounded pellets because if you use pointy pellets, they interlock into each other and it's going to cause you jams. So you cannot use pointy hunting pellets with the magazine. However, you can single load pointy pellets into here. And this is a bit of a ball ache as well, to be honest, is that you know, two two pellets um, or two, two, two five pellets are small and fiddly and it is gravity fed. So you find yourself having to drop the pellet in, make sure it goes in right so that when you cock it, it goes in the right way. If it doesn't, shake it out and do it again. So it is a bit of a pain in the backside to do that, but it is possible to do for pointy pellets. So the magazine system, um, that was changed when they brought out their new rifle, the Smartra, and they basically put a, a rounded uh, standard type indexing uh, magazine that's slotted into a slot up the top here, um, and they solved that problem. Um, but yes, it is a bit of a problem with this, but uh, once you get used to it and you know how it all works and you set the pellet trap up to your size, it all works beautifully uh, and from there onwards. And I haven't had any problems with jams or anything on it at all. So. That's definitely a con with that. Another con with this rifle is its weight. Yeah, it is hefty, it's chunky. You're not gonna be wanting to walk around a field with this one. Um, personally, I see this rifle as a, as a ambush rifle, or a, yeah, an ambush rifle. That, that's how I would use it. Um, now, apparently it's called the monkey gun because of, you know, basically you sling it over your shoulder in Korea, into the jungles, monkey up in the tree, 80 foot pound, pull, bang, and shoot monkeys out of the tree. Um, I don't know if that's true, I don't know if somebody's pulling my leg, but um, personally, uh, yeah, I, I definitely an ambush, ambush type rifle for me, and a lot of the videos that I've seen of people using these seem to be using them in those sort of formats, so yeah, weight, definitely weight is an issue, but unlike the Hatsan, this rifle actually works, and I do, do like it, I do like that. Okay, so what we talked about, yeah. Um, Another con with these is that the Mark I, basically people are saying to avoid the Mark wrong because it was the first rifle they did and it had issues with the Mark II, and you can tell it's a Mark II because of on this side it says Career 707 and it's got two written on it. And the Mark III has three on there. The Mark II is definitely the one to get. Um, obviously you've got problems getting hold of them because of the anti-tampering and the power settings as we talked about. So yeah. Yeah, that is a bit of an issue. But if you can find one, and I've seen a couple for sale, we're sort of looking anywhere around the 400, 500 pound mark as of March. Um, no, where are we? As of May uh, 2017. Oh, yeah. So yeah, that is a bit of an issue, is getting hold of one of these. And of course then spare parts, etc. if anything goes wrong with them, yeah, that's gonna be difficult as well. Oh, yeah. 
So what else have we got? Uh, it's unregulated as well, so um, you do need to be counting your shot counts on there. Now, I've not had the time to sit down and count the shot counts on here, but it's well over 100 or so on there. So you're looking at a good 10, 10 magazines before you really should be starting to look um, at a 200 bar fill. Um, another problem that you're going to watch out for is that the Mark III, if you do get a Mark III, apparently, as we said before, started using plastic parts in it and it caused leaks and stuff like that. Um, so, again, do your research on that and if you're getting a Mark III for those that are outside the UK, have a nosy around, have a look around. But enough of the bad points. Let's go on to the good points about it. Personally, I think this is a stunningly beautiful rifle. I wasn't sure about the double... Uh, air cylinders on here sort of put me off a little bit but you know what I can live with it I can live with that it's weight I can live with that as well I'm not gonna be lugging this around this is this is an ambush rifle in my eye doesn't it this is a proper good full power um, hunting rifle now would I buy one in this format set to 12 foot pound no I wouldn't because there's better stuff out there in my eyes um, if I was a collector of course I'd buy one it's beautiful but if I had an FAC license, you know what? I think I would buy one of these if I could get one with the full power adjustment still working on it. Yeah, I can see why these are really, really sought after. Um, they are beautiful, beautiful looking rifles. They do the job and they are stupidly accurate. Well, not stupidly, they're, they're, they're accurate, let's just put it that way. Um, and that's definitely a plus point with this rifle, power and the accuracy uh, really really and it's sort of quite a simple thing if you can get over the magazine loading system which if you can't take a look at the Sumatra if you can again get hold of one of those uh, because that has a, a rotary magazine that you can put in here but um, yeah nice another thing I do like about it I don't know what it is maybe it's the cowboy and Indians uh, that's, that's a safety catch maybe it's the cowboys and Indians but <laughs> I do like that I don't know why, I don't know why. Um, it's not great, it's not easy when you're bench shooting, but if you're out, yeah, that's nice. That is really, really nice. So, um, yeah, I think that about covers it all. Um, yeah, the Sinshun, uh, the Sin, Sinshun uh, Korea 707 Mark II. Yeah, it gets a thumbs up from me. It definitely gets a thumbs up from me. It's unusual, it's a pleasure to shoot. Um, Definitely, if you've got an FAC license and you can get hold of one of these, you will not be disappointed. So, uh, yeah, take a look at them, but not a beginner's gun. Definitely not a beginner's gun. So, uh, hopefully, you like this video. Uh, as usual, give me the thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below. Keep them nice, keep them civil. Yeah, we're, we're doing really well on the channel. We're not having to ban anyone so far. Oh, well, only a couple of idiots, but really well. And um, as usual as well, uh, you'll probably see my Patreon banner that's lying around. So if you'd like to donate um, and help the channel out, uh, think about becoming a Patreon um, or in the description, I've also got a PayPal link for those that want, don't want to do it that way and just want to do a one-off. So as usual, catch you next time, guys. Um, happy shooting and uh, be safe.